Good morning on this early Monday, August 27th. Tropical Storm Isaac has moved into the southeast Gulf of Mexico, and although the maximum sustained winds remain at 65 miles per hour, the latest reconnaissance data is indicating that the central pressure has decreased to 990 millibars. Also, the satellite does reveal that the storm structure appears to be improving with time, and there is also data from the Hurricane Hunters that the center of position has shifted a little bit more toward the north as the center did relocate a little bit. Now as to whether or not that is going to have any significant influences on where the storm is going to make a direct landfall, that is still somewhat unknown. If anything, it may be a little bit to the north of the latest hurricane center forecast track. But overall, over the course of the night, we have seen a better model consensus with the track lining up somewhere across southeast Louisiana into coastal Mississippi. More on that in just a moment, but this is also another look at the enhanced color representation of the infrared satellite. And the center of circulation does appear to be somewhere along the northern periphery of this convective central dense overcast. And the reason why we are still seeing the center displace a little bit to the north of the middle part of this convection is because we do have a little bit in the way of southwest vertical wind shear. Something that the models have not handled very well is this upper level low that you see on the latest water vapor. And as long as the water vapor shows the upper level low close to the tropical storm, southwest vertical wind shear will be somewhat of an issue. Now over time, Isaac is forecast to continue moving west-northwest or northwest, and the distance between Isaac and the upper level low will consistently increase. Therefore, we could see a slight reduction in the southerly vertical wind shear the closer that Isaac gets toward the coastline and several of the models are still showing that the greatest period of intensification will be shortly before landfall and we are still looking at the possibility of a category 2 or low end category 3 major hurricane that is still something that is on the table at this time this morning's national water vapor satellite imagery is very revealing because it shows all of the synoptic steering players across North America First off, this is the major trough that the models have outlined across the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast over the next two to three days. And if this trough were just a little bit deeper or amplified more toward the south, then it would probably be enough to lure tropical cyclone Isaac straight toward the Florida Panhandle. But instead, the trough is forecast to remain a little bit more toward the north. And in the meantime, we still have a narrow pocket of ridging situated across the southeast United States. And we have a reinforcing shot of ridging coming into the central United States from the Rockies, and you can even make out the clockwise motion around this ridge. The trend in the models is that this ridge will make it toward the central United States in time to prevent Isaac from lifting north with that trough, and if anything, the steering currents could break down between the ridge and the trough just as Cyclone Isaac is nearing the U.S. Gulf Coast, so the forward motion could begin to slow down substantially with potentially even the threat of a stall either at or just north of the coastline, and thereafter, the storm should begin to meander inland somewhere out across southeast Louisiana or coastal Mississippi. But all interest from Morgan City eastward through Destin should continue to closely monitor Isaac until we begin to see a really clear-cut forecast track. This is the early morning 6E tropical model suite plot. And as you can see, the models are forming a much better consensus now with a track somewhere out across southeast Louisiana. But we still have a couple select members that are showing a track more toward the north into the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Either way, if it does slam into southeast Louisiana, the impacts along the immediate Mississippi coastline would still be rather severe as the storm surge is typically greater to the east of the eye. The same can almost be said to some extent even for areas a bit more toward the east there, including Dauphin Island in Orange Beach and Pensacola, as sometimes depending on the wind field, the northeast quadrant could be the more significant portion of the hurricane. So we don't want to dismiss the potential impacts here northeast of the center if it does take that southeast Louisiana track. And also it would not take much for the center to shift it gradually a bit more toward the west. And that is why Morgan City still needs to keep a close watch on this storm. This is the zero Z run of the GFS model. And the GFS is continuing to show more steady intensification beginning within the next 24 hours across the Gulf. And the model is also becoming more consistent with the southeast Louisiana track. As we work into the mid to late morning hours of Tuesday into the early afternoon, this is the current timetable from the GFS for a landfall almost due south of Louisiana between Venice and Grand Isle. And this is not a very good track solution for New Orleans and all of the communities immediately to the south and east of there as the storm surge would be rather significant, not to mention the potential for Category 2 or Category 3 force winds. 
Beyond the early Tuesday afternoon landfall, the GFS shows the storm being captured by the ridge, and the ridge would help to promote a more west-northwest motion throughout the remainder of the forecast period, and the GFS is showing just that with a track more so into central and even western Louisiana, and finally northeast Texas and the Shreveport area as we go on into Thursday night and Friday, with the remnants finally spilling over into Oklahoma and Arkansas. This is the six-day GFS precipitation forecast, and with the relatively slow movement of the storm just to the south of the ridge, the GFS is painting in upwards of 10 to 15 inches of rainfall across the greater New Orleans metropolitan area. Also, we have seen a shift with the 0Z run of the ECMWF. Through 24 and 48 hours, the model has already taken a shift a little bit closer toward the mouth of the Mississippi River and Venice, Louisiana, and by 72 hours, it's showing a very slow rate of speed with hardly any continuous motion and that is due to the constant battle that the European is showing between the trough and the ridge to the northwest as to which one is going to have the more dominant steering influence and there could be a period between 48 and 72 hours where neither the ridge nor the trough really have much control and as a result the steering currents near Mississippi and Louisiana could at least temporarily break down and this does not bode well especially if the storm is right on the coastline as that would help to prolong the storm surge risk and also continue to increase the risk of inland flooding due to the enormous precipitation totals that could fall as a result of this nearly stationary tropical cyclone. We also see more disagreement between the GFS and the European as we go into day four. By this time the GFS was showing more of a westerly track into western Louisiana whereas the European model was showing the storm lingering around southern and central Mississippi as it really has nowhere to go with the ridge to the north and then finally into day five we start to see more of a northerly track into northern Arkansas and Tennessee. The five-day precipitation forecast from the Hydro Meteorological Prediction Center also confirms the possibility of extreme rainfall totals as they are showing a bullseye of 15 to 18 inches from Pensacola southwestward into the extreme southeast parishes of Louisiana and of course this is still pending some of the changes in the forecast track that may still come about up until landfall. This morning's radar animation shows that much of southern and central Florida is still being encountered by a lot of the outer bands from Tropical Storm Isaac and within these outer bands you will have the risk of isolated short-lived tornadoes and as more of these bands start to spiral into the central Gulf Coast the tornado risk will also begin to extend more toward the north and northwest and the Storm Prediction Center severe weather outlook for this afternoon does encompass much of the extreme Gulf Coastal communities extending into Florida within this outside risk of a tornado and the same can be said as we go on into the day Tuesday and Wednesday. So given the data that has become available this morning I feel as though there is greater need for more mandatory evacuations to the south of Lake Pontchartrain especially for all of the cities to the south and east of New Orleans within extreme southeast Louisiana and New Orleans is certainly not in the clear this morning in fact there is still a lot of evidence that is showing a potential for a direct hit so if you feel uncomfortable about being located within any of these areas then it may be best to just go ahead and decide to evacuate if you do decide to evacuate then today would be the day because conditions could start to go downhill as early as Tuesday morning for interest across southern Mississippi South Alabama and even Pensacola there is still the chance that you could be facing a direct hit from Isaac and even if the storm passes to the west you would likely be located near the northeast quadrant and especially across Mississippi this area is very vulnerable to high storm surge and the storm surge is normally the highest immediately to the east of wherever the center is going to come inland so everyone along these areas as well should be bracing for high end impacts as Isaac begins to make landfall here within the next 48 to 72 hours and finally interests out across central Louisiana also need to be paying attention as the current spread of model tracks is not too far from Morgan City. So thank you again for following 28storms.com. Please be safe if you live along the central Gulf Coast and make those final preparations today before conditions start to go downhill.